Well, in this last message in the series of uh, the fruit of the spirit of kindness, I wanted to end with this thought. So I'm going to give you the title of this message, and then I'm going to work back and show you how I got there. And it's the spontaneous kindness of Jesus lives in you. Now let me say that again. Say the spontaneous Spontaneous. kindness of Jesus lives in you. Now say, lives in me. Oh, Jesus, really? That's kind of a big, that's a big statement that he would live in us. No, you're not. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. You were saved by grace through faith, not of works, so that any man should boast. God's, listen, God's not waiting for you to get perfect. That's the job of the Holy Spirit is to lead you down the path of righteousness, lead you into truth, and to grow you. If you're connected to the vine, you're going to bear fruit. If you're not, you won't. It's pretty simple. The gospel's not difficult. It's really pretty simple. God wants us to, to live with the fruit of his spirit flowing out of our lives. Romans 8, 1. Paul says, he says, therefore, there is, therefore is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Say no condemnation. Oh, didn't that feel good? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Somebody give God praise. We're not going, listen, Paul said it also in another place. He says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, which is all the do's and don'ts. You can't eat this, you got to eat that, and you can drink this, can't drink that, got to drink it on that day, eat on that day. It's not, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He, he nails it just like that. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Say, God did it. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Do you know living uh, living according to the law is a bloody Old Testament endeavor? There, every time there was a sin, there had to be atonement for that sin. So there was a blood sacrifice over and over and over and over again. Way over 700 laws. There's a lot of suggestions, almost laws, but then there's 700 plus laws that you had to do. From where do you go to the bathroom? To how do you, what do you do when you get a sore on your arm? You don't do it just right. You sin. You got to go make a sacrifice. I mean, it was such a laborsome, un- impossible endeavor to stay in that perfect place of righteousness in and of yourself. Self-righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So the law, what it couldn't do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as that offering for sin He, Jesus, condemns sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is, here it is, life and peace, because the mind settled in the flesh is hostile towards God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. It's not even able to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, through, though the body is dead because of sin, yet is a, uh, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. You need to understand this concept. Your righteousness is not something that you earn, something that you can achieve. No, our righteousness always is attached to receiving what Jesus did for us. Christians, we need to be better recipients of his grace, of his forgiveness 
of him paying the price for our righteousness. Do we need to do we need to live with our hearts sold out to him? Yes. Are you going to make mistakes? Yes. Because you're still wearing this. So, Pastor, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you think we need to get out and just, you know, we need to focus on all the things we should do and, and, and also focus on the things that we shouldn't do? You know what you're doing? You're law-focused instead of sun-focused. You will go in the direction of your focus. If all I do is keep reminding you of your sin, guess what you're going to do? All you're going to do is think about your sin, and after you think about your sin long enough, it's going to be manifested in your body because if you think about it long enough, you're going to go do it. When you, when you become sun-focused, we walk in the light as he himself is in the light and we have fellowship with one another. He, he cleanses us. He heals us. He grows us. Pastor, that sounds like a, that sounds like a, a grace gospel. It is. And some people say, man, I heard the grace gospel was a cheap gospel. Can I just tell you, the grace gospel is the most expensive gospel on the planet. It is not cheap. It's the most expensive gospel that will ever be preached because the grace gospel caused Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only Son of God, to get nailed to a tree. He gave his life for us. He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf. He died on the cross. The last words he said on the cross was, it is finished. Everything that separates us from him has been paid for. We need to learn how to receive the most expensive gift that has ever been given. And just thank God for it. And when we realize how much he loves us, we would love him more too. And, and, and the best thing is, he didn't, he didn't just pay that price. He, and not, he didn't just rise from the dead, which that's unbelievable that that happened. But then he allowed the Holy Spirit to take up residence in us. That we are the temple of his Holy Spirit. And his Spirit lives in us. We become born again. It is not Christ, it is not I, but Christ living in me. Do we understand what the gospel message really is? That he is amazing. And the fruit of his spirit lives in us. If we walk by the spirit, we'll not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Raised us in he gives life to our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells within us. So we're living by the spirit. We're walking by the spirit. If we're not careful, if you just use your imagination instead of reading the word, that can actually get kind of weird. I'm living by the spirit. Oh, let's live by the Spirit. Let's live by the Spirit. And then one lady, she's like, it's almost like Lucky Charms. She was like, I see blue moons, green clovers. Like, come on now. Come on now. There's a, seriously, seriously, there was a devil under every rock, and everything that was made out of wood was a symbol of. Uh, uh, of the cross that Jesus lived on. And we hyper spiritualism, all that, all that will start coming out. But listen, I want you to know that, that, that walking and living by the Spirit is not symbolic. It's a physical manifestation of His Holy Spirit living inside of us. You say, well, what does that look like, Pastor? I mean, is there, is there, does God sometimes speak in abstract, different ways? Yes. Nobody's going to have that all figured out. But can we get to where the rubber meets the road? Galatians 5.22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit in us is love. If <laughs> you want it any more simple than that, if you, God's, if you have God's Spirit inside of you, one thing you will have the capacity to do where you may not have been able to do it before is you can love people. Jesus said this, and it will blow your mind if you think about it. He said, love 
your enemies. What? Bless those that curse you. Are you kidding me? Love, joy. Everybody smile real quick. Come on. The, 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 the temperature of the room just changed. Then it just feel good all of a sudden. Makes me want to have eat some cake or something. I don't know. Peace. The fruit of the Spirit of God is peace. Everybody breathe in. Lord, <gasps> Ah, usa. That's so good. Patience. How many of us need a little bit more fruit of the spirit of patience? Pray for me. They're doing construction on the Grand Parkway right now. I need a lot of prayer right now. And here we are, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's also walk by the Spirit. That is the fruit of His Spirit that we just talked about manifested in our daily lives, in our mind, in our words, in our ears, in our heart, in our actions. To live by the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit, is to walk and live like Jesus. You'll never be Jesus. There's only one Son of God that paid the price for all of us. But His Spirit lives inside of us. You know, Jesus lived in the moment every single day, every second of every single day. He was in the moment. He, he, he was, <laughs> he, he's eternal. Before there was, Jesus was with the Father. Before there was, and after it's all said and done, Jesus will be there. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's all of that, but yet he leaves that place and comes and lives in a mortal body. Born of a virgin, lived a life, lived an amazing 30 years and then started ministry. And show, not only, see, God didn't just tell us how to live. He showed us how to live. He lived in the moment. Jesus was fully aware. Jesus was fully present wherever he was. He, he didn't miss anything. See, see, we see with these eyes. But Jesus has a perception that none of us have. He knows what you're thinking before you think it. He knows your inner workings of, he knows all about the pain and the hurt. He knows it all. He's omniscient, all-knowing. He does. He has that. Fully aware, fully present. And there's so many great examples of Jesus living in what I call the place of divine interruption. He was interrupted all the time. All the time. There's so many good examples of the divine interruption, but also where he wants us to be is showing spontaneous kindness. There was some, I'm just being, I'm just being honest. And if, if you were in those verses with me when like Arnold and I are having those conversations, Jesus was really kind to people that I would really just not be kind to. Do you know there was a lot of, See, he came to his own, and his own received him not. And because they rejected him, that actually became the chief, Jesus, Jesus became the chief cornerstone to the Gentiles. Because the, the Jews rejected Jesus, it opened up the door for us. Thank God. He, God really does know what he's doing. And a lot of Jews turn to Jesus and love Jesus and still love Jesus today because of, because of that time. But there were times where they, people were just mean, and Jesus, instead of, in, in, here's, here's a good one. Jesus coming to the town, and the scribes and the Pharisees, they were always looking for a reason to it, you know, throw him off a cliff or stone him. So he would just, you can't touch me. That, not that he pulled kung fu. He did some supernatural thing where he would just kind of disappear and just show up on the other side. Hey, y'all, how you doing? Bye. <laughs> he, was, he was like that. But this one town, he shows up, he's in this town, and they're saying, well, the only way Jesus could cast out demons is because he's, a, he's the chief of demons. 
And Jesus was like, y'all quit playing. He didn't even go address them. Go look at it. He did not even address them. What Jesus did is he healed everybody sick in the town and everybody demon-possessed and everybody that was depressed and sad. Jesus healed their bodies, healed their mind, addressed whatever it was. He didn't, he didn't get distracted. We get so distracted. We get enticed. We get pulled. And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. I know my mission, my mandate, but my meat, my drink is what he said, is to do the will of my Father who sent me. Jesus didn't miss a beat. Come on, somebody, give him, give him praise. And he doesn't want us to either. So if we receive him and he lives in us and the fruit of his spirit lives in us then the spontaneous fruit of his kindness lives in us too and it's like i need to get out <laughs> if there's ever been a time where the world needs spontaneous kindness from the body of christ it's right now man the world needs a hug bad it needs a spanking and a hug. <laughs> That's the way I did with my kids, right? Come here. Wop, wop. All right, I love you. Get out of here. <laughs> so catch it. Fully present. Spontaneous fruit of kindness constantly flowing out of people. He said, man, I wish I, wish I could have lived in the time of Jesus. Me too, because I get to see it. But if you read your Bible, you can see it over and over and over and over again. That constantly just being, it's like, well, Jesus knew where he was and he was always at the right place at the right time. I don't, it may be, but I think more importantly where we're at today is we can be at the right place at the right time. How many opportunities do we blow to be spontaneously kind to the people in the world that are around us on our jobs with our kids with our spouse with a stranger it happens all the time and you think it's got to be these big miracles like like parting the red sea or lazarus come forth and that had to be cool jesus like man my best friend i raised him from the dead in front of his sisters that had to be so awesome those are miracles that you're casting out demons, right? No, the first, remember the, okay, trivia game. What was the first miracle that Jesus performed? Boom, boom. Y'all get, y'all get, we're going to buy, buy y'all nachos, right? Yeah, quesadillas nachos. That's absolutely right. He turned the water into wine. You think really, if you're going to make your debut miracle moment, is it going to be turning the water into wine? He was moving, as much as he flowed in, in the power and the faith and the anointing and the prophetic, and he flowed in all these giftings, he was also equally empowered and filled with the Holy Spirit of kindness. Mary, probably Mary's best friend, their kid was getting married, Mary's friend getting married. And, and uh, so they're at the wedding, everybody's hanging out, Jesus is there, just, just a normal person. And all of a sudden, they, Jesus, his mom comes running up. Hey, the maitre d' just told me. Man, more people showed up than they were supposed to. And they listen, they done ran out of wine. They are out. And this is about to get really embarrassing. So, so Jesus, she, she's looking at Jesus. She says, Jesus, can, 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 listen, I never ask you for much, baby. But can, can you just help me out on this one? Mom. It's, go read your Bible. Mom, it's not even my time yet, Mama. It's not even my time. They don't even know. They don't even know about, you know, the whole womb thing and the angels. And, and then they don't know. They don't know. And she didn't even, she, she just cut that conversation off. She says, hey, guys, talking about the wedding attendants. Okay, so guys, this is what I need you to do. Uh, listen, whatever he says to do, just, just do that. Just do that, Okay. Okay, all right. Bye, Jesus. I love you, baby. I got to go. <laughs> Next thing you know, yeah, read your Bible. It's in there. Next thing you know, Jesus said, okay, I need, I need six water pots. 
And water pots are for ceremonial hand washing. So these water pots, there's just water pots, that's all it is. And they, here's, the, here's the dimensions. There's two sizes. One is a 20-gallon pot, and one is a 30-gallon pot. So you do the math, 6 times 30 on the high end, that's 180 gallons of wine. Okay, let's just be, let's just be honest. I've been to a lot of weddings, <laughs> and I've never been to a wedding with 180 gallons of wine. And the thing of it is, Jesus didn't halfway do a miracle. He didn't halfway do a miracle. Jesus, he, he made the wine so good. And people say, no, that was really good grape juice. No, stop playing. That's real wine. Because the maitre d s- shuts the whole wedding down and says, hey, guys, hey, here it is. Here it is. Listen, we normally serve the really good wine at the beginning of the wedding. And then after a few glasses, people don't care if it's good or not. But what happened, <laughs> that's what he said. You read your Bible. And he said, but today they saved the best for last. You talk about spontaneous kindness. And I guarantee you, when, when he said that, Mary looked across the room over there, Jesus, and Jesus went. <laughs> We need to learn how even when it's not a big deal to be spontaneously kind, why can't we be overflowing abundant in our kindness? Because the world needs it so bad right now. The man with leprosy, one of his first miracles, he hollers at Jesus because, you know, you're not allowed to touch anybody with leprosy. You should have been in the quarantine place, but somehow he gets loose, right? And he's running around town, got leprosy. Not, nobody wants to touch him. He says, hey, Jesus, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And I love Jesus' attitude. He didn't say, now this isn't in there, but it's a question that I have. I, I would, if I was Jesus, I would say, how did you, how did you get out of quarantine? You know, you know, we don't have penicillin, you know, I mean, you could get it. We get this whole town walking around looking like zombie apocalypse. He doesn't say that. He didn't say, how did you get leprosy or how did you get out? If you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, oh, I'm willing. Be healed. Oh, if we, more, more people would be able to receive the kindness of God if we wouldn't pick them apart when they're in the middle of their mess and they're asking for help. We don't need to know the whole story. What, we, what people really need and what we need is we need to tell the only story that God loves you and he sent his son to save you and you can have a free life. We need it. There was the woman caught in adultery. You're talking about divine interruptions. I wish somebody would, you know, they found another trove of scrolls. Remember the Dead Sea Scrolls and a lot of books were found during that, incredible books that were found? They found another trove out there in that region in the Middle East. And uh, they're, they're actually deciphering that and unpacking all that. And what I hope one of the books are, all of the unfinished messages of Jesus. <laughs> when he was about to preach an amazing message and he got cut off. Jesus had the guys in the middle of the town square. Do you remember this? Had the guys in the middle of the town square. And he goes, okay, so you know, there's something that's just been in my heart and I really wanted to give you. I want to tell you these secrets of heaven. Didn't say that, but just, just getting ready to tell him something. And right when he's getting ready to teach, here comes these scribes and Pharisees dragging this young lady in. She's bawling. She's terrified for her life. She thinks this is about the last 10 minutes of her life. They come dragging her in. Well, Jesus, you know, in the law, it says, if you catch, we found this woman who was caught, and this is how they said it, in the very act of adultery. And the law says we should stone one such as her. What do you say we do, Jesus? Spontaneous kindness. 
if we get good at it, we're going to blow people's minds. She sh according to the law, she should be stoned. Jesus looked at all of them. His disciples are watching too. He said, He who is without sin, let them cast the first stone. And he stoops down to the ground and begins writing in the sand. I want to find that book because I want to know what he wrote. He yeah. said from the oldest to the youngest, they all began to leave. They all began to leave. Of course, we don't know what he wrote, but I also I'll, I'll often think, what did Jesus write? He probably wrote something like adultery definition to people. Where's the other person? He probably wrote, Freddie, <laughs> chief scribe, weren't you with her last Friday? How about this? How did you know where to find her? We don't know. But the one thing we do know, this woman is terrified. She's bawling. She's probably in a heap on the ground waiting for the first rock to hit her. And one by one, he's riding on the ground. And one by one, they all walk away from the oldest to the young, to the youngest. They all walk away. And when the last one left, he turns to her and lifts her up. And he says, daughter. Come on, baby. Where are your accusers? Where are they? Neither do I accuse you. Now go and sin no more. See, kindness is sometimes not in what you say. It's what you don't say. And sometimes kindness, kindness is in what you say, but also in how you say it. Sometimes kindness is not in what you do, but what you don't do. But sometimes it's in what you do and how you do it. Is your mind jumbled right now? We need to be led by the Lord. And we need to realize that God sees humanity through the eyes of eternity. The pastor told me a long time ago, he said, Jesus died for people. Be careful how you treat those people that Jesus died for. Live in that place of spontaneous kindness it can happen at any second it can happen while you're driving a police car it can happen while you're driving a school bus it can happen as you're working behind the counter at a hotel it can happen at the tax office when they're sitting behind the glass and they're they're trying to work as fast as they can and people are running up is can you can you go just a little bit faster are you kidding me why can't listen it's 2022 can't we set an appointment yes you can well i didn't know so you need to bump me to the front of the line anyway and then you, and then all of a sudden, let me just tell you this. Whatever God has called you to, God will equip you for. He will make a way. Out of every temptation, he'll give you a way of escape. But we got to look for it. We got to know it. And sometimes the way of escape that God wants to give us is to stay rooted and grounded and planted, covered and cloaked with his fruit of his spirit. He is the shield about us. And we don't have to fight. 
In fact, that's the problem is we try to, try to fight the battles that aren't ours. And my Bible tells me that the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. We put on the full armor of God, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, our loins girded with truth. Come on. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We can win. And I'll, and I'll say this. What God, what God wants more than anything today is to be mindful of the time that we're in right now. Someone said it yesterday, and it just rang so crystal clear and true to my heart that for many this is the most beautiful day of victory for our country and i've heard someone else say that this is the most fearful day of our country you know our our our, our country is full of many different many different people many different perspectives many different journeys and I love this season that we're in with um, really, really pouring into local missions and some of these other things. I, I, I'll tell you, um, the Supreme Court took the Roe v. Wade decision out of Washington, D.C. and put it back in the hands of the states. And so every state is going to have to make that decision for its residents. And, and, and I want to say this. Some states, they're going to be more aggressive towards uh, abortion. We need to pray about that. Some states are going to stay exactly as they are. And some states are going to become more restrictive. It's all in the hands of the states. There was talk, and, and there are, let me just say this, conservative and liberal media are twisting this, and, and one of my concerns is, is the enemy, you know, like the Bible says that God can take what the enemy meant for harm and destruction and turn it for good. The enemy can take, and take a situation like this and with his opportunity, opportunistic self is twist it and try to make something worse than what it actually is, and it's, it's, for many, a beautiful day, and for others, a very fearful day. But as the body of Christ, it is our job, it's actually our privilege and our honor to be the hands and feet of Jesus to this world that's around us today. So I just want to encourage you, if there's ever been a time to be to operate in spontaneous kindness, it's right now. It's right now. Science is evolving. Have you noticed that? With microscopes and procedures and people that are, we're living longer and we're knowing more about the human body. And so the more as science evolves, the more people will realize actually when life begins. Do you know a baby in the womb is not the mama's body? Hear me out. Half of the DNA of that baby comes from the mom. Half of the DNA comes from the dad. But there's no other person on the planet that has the same DNA. Still, am I right? There's no other person on the planet that has the DNA of that child in that womb. It's a baby. Now, I also, I also want you to know that there's a lot of women that have been subjected to trauma, to drama, to injustice. And the whole process of what it looks like to go through that, to go through a, an unwanted pregnancy, and for us just to to stamp and say, okay, here's the rules and this is exactly how we do it. I don't know what the answer is other than the fact is that we need Jesus and we need to be kind and we need to love people and we need to declare the truth. That's a baby. 
that's a baby. And there's a lot of, lot of what we're going to process. And, and, and listen, hear my heart for just a second. It's probably, the, I, I, you, you all know I don't talk about political stuff. But this is a political stuff. This is stuff that's affecting everybody in America right now. You know what? Societies evolve. As knowledge and revelation comes, cultures evolve. About, well, between 250 and 300 years ago, there were laws on the books in the United States of America. And I'm, a, I'm a history buff. They said that um, African Americans were only three-fifths human. And when they brought them in on slave ships, many of them didn't survive the voyage. They died in the hull of these slave ships. When they got here, they put them on auction blocks and shackles around their uh, neck and around their legs and around their, uh, their wrists, and they split up their families and they treated, treated them like cattle. And the propaganda was being written that, that they are only three-fifths. But something about truth, you can't keep that down forever. And people would recognize those that were working on the farms. And actually, some plantation owners and, and people that were involved in that whole uh, slave trade, they began to realize, wait a minute, they have eyes that look just like mine. They have ears that look just like mine. They, they talk, they reason just like me, just like my kids. I refuse to believe that they are three-fifths human. They are human. And they stepped up to the line and began to have their voices heard. And the largest loss of life that has ever happened in America was in the Civil War, which was over the slavery issue. I sure hope God gives us grace during this season. Enlightenment can come, change can come, and answers can come for, for, for women and families that have been involved in, in, in uh those decisions in the past, but it's a time if we've ever needed spontaneous kindness in America and in the world today, it is right now. Will you stand to your feet, church, please? Come on, give the Lord praise. You need to see His spontaneous kindness flowing out of you. You need to see a spontaneous kindness flowing to you. Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. So in the days ahead, when people find out you're a Christian or how you believe, you may believe differently than I do. And when the accusations and the judgment and the name calling and the threats come your way, I need you to embrace this simple truth. When a name comes to you, like Nation and I had this conversation when he was a little bitty boy. One of the co coaches was calling him a name or something. can't remember what it was. And, and Nation came to me very upset. And he said, the coach said this about me. And I said, Nation, I got one question for you. Is it true, son? He said, Absolutely not, Dad. Are you kidding me? You know me. That, that's not who I am. I said, well, Nation, I'm going to tell you what my daddy told me. My daddy said, if the shoe fits, wear it. And if the shoe doesn't fit, stop cramming your foot in that shoe. You Come on. You hold your head up high. You hold your head up high. Know who you are in Christ. And if you are messed up, please... Stop being messed up. We have an incredible people uh, that, that work in ministry here. We'll pray with you. We will love you. Hey, you can come to our, our prayer times. And listen, you walk, with, you walk with believers that got good fruit hanging on their tree. It won't be, it won't be long. You'll have great fruit hanging on your tree too. We can grow together. Amen. Own our stuff and it gets better. So we need Jesus. I'm just saying. I do you we all do 
Come on, take your hands and turn them like this. God's, God wants to fill us up with that spontaneous kindness. You're going to walk out of here with a smile on your face. And trust me, listen, if you, if you allow God to do this, He's all of a sudden going to fine-tune your ear to His voice. And when you walk past the opportunity, Jesus always stopped. When we walk past the opportunity, all of a sudden, it's going to feel like we've got concrete in our shoes and go, whoa, 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 wait. i gotta go, I got to go see what that was. Why did, why did I have to slow down? Why did I have... And God's going to give you those opportunities. I call them divine appointments. So let's say this with me. Say, today, Lord Jesus, I confess I need you to heal my mind, my heart, and my emotions. To come into my heart and forgive me of my sin and be my Lord and Savior. Help me to flow with spontaneous kindness from your Holy Spirit. Show me where they're at. Show me what to do. And be obedient to whatever it is you want me to say. And I'm going to live for you for the rest of my life, no matter what, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, give him praise. Thanks again for watching River of Praise. We hope that we inspired you, encouraged you. And if we did, would you please share this video with your friends and family? Also, if you'd like to support River of Praise, there's a link on the bottom of the screen you can click to give. Thanks again for watching.